to make a habit of empathy, to recognize ourselves in each other. If empathy was a, uh, a, uh, a type of animal or a type of land, what type of land or what type of an animal would it be? It would definitely have water. So it, it's, it would definitely be air. It would be something like a, a, um, a very kind kind of, um, probably like a seal comes to mind or a dolphin kind of comes to mind. That type of energy would be very empathic and very feeling, that kind of nature. Yeah. Okay, and if we continue with the uh, metaphor of the other side of empathy, the, uh, the structure and the order, uh, what, what would that be like? What kind of an animal or type of land? Um, well, a, a healthy, uh, well, I, I see animals mainly as they really are healthy. In other words, they're natural, so they're, they're not, they don't have egos, so that they're, they're not, they don't misuse their, these things in some ways. So maybe a dolphin is a good example of, you know, uh, and I don't know much about them, but it has good healthy boundaries and knows how to protect itself and to sustain itself. But um, dogs can be really empathic. I'm just thinking out loud. Dogs suck up emotions. They can reflect emotions of, of, um, of, of their owners. And dogs can be very kind. And you know, you look into their eyes, and very, there's a kindness there. So um, I don't know, but I see most most. I, I just think of the animal kingdoms as being more healthy than the human kingdom, to be honest. We, we have, we're trying to figure some things out e with our egos, but animals are in a natural state. Well, there were two. You were saying that there's kind of, you have two sides uh, to the uh, empathic part, and then there's another kind of clear boundaries and more order. I, I, actually, I see those together because okay. I have to govern my empathy. Mm -hmm. My empathy is a very feminine part of me. It's a very sensitive part of me. And if I simply go into that empathic place and I, and I describe, then I can, I get lost. I actually, it's like getting, it's swimming. It's like being adrift. And I would, and I spent, oh, a couple years in that way. I'd walk into a restaurant maybe with friends or something and I'd start feeling other people's stories and other things going on and I was like pulled. Now what I do is I have my, my masculine boundaries, kind of like the warrior side of me puts up good boundaries. The lover side of me has an open heart and can feel, but I've got good boundaries and I, and I don't, and I'm better boundaries, sometimes I'm not perfect. And better boundaries so that I can use my empathy responsibly as opposed to getting, you know, getting derailed or derailing others. What would be then, if it's boundaries, it would be kind of some kind of animal that has clearly defined boundaries? You know? Ah, okay. Well, look at the animal, animal kingdom. Uh -huh. I always related to the eagle. The eagle's a predator. The eagle goes after exactly what it wants. The, the wolf, the wolf is a great, has been a great totem of mine. And the wolf is, you know, if you ever watch a wolf kill, and when I was in the military, we were like wolves. We would just carefully, and we'd focus, and we'd smell the, weak, the blood and, we'd, and the weak voice, and we'd focus our energy and our attention on that. So that's the predatory side of me. Now that, um, that, uh, that, you know the the predator in some way uses it uses its it uses its power. Now the prey, maybe rabbits or deer or something. A deer is a good example of you know they're, they're they're like very soft and sensitive, and the wolf and the deer maybe. But it's not either or. I you know I can see them kind of like I can see both sides of me. I can see both the deer side of me. And I see the wolf. And, I, and if I'm too much wolf, my life doesn't work. If I'm too much deer, my life doesn't work. Or it was uh, wolf, uh, eagle, and dolphin were the other two, right? That's what you were saying. And um, so I, just to take it a few steps in terms of the eagle talking to the dolphin and having a conversation, uh, the empathy and the, you know, the, the focus and mm -hmm. the, and the uh, 
boundaries, what, how do they kind of relate to it? What would they say? Like, what does the eagle say to the dolphin? I do what I do best. So in some ways, I see, as I look within myself, I see a dialogue within Joseph. And this is, uh, I see different points of view. I see some feminine points of view. I see some masculine points of view. And the Native Americans would very much use these totems, for example. So I see the dolphin side of me, which is very flowing and watery and just intuitive, etc. Then I see the, the eagle side of me, which has vision and can, can see like uh, literally a mile, they can see a mouse at a mile or a, whatever their prey might be. And then they make clear decisions. Decision means you cut off all their choices and you go for what you want. And I have, and that, those are just kind of like two pole, poles. There's many other animals in that circle of totems. And if you give each animal its own voice, then you find the medicine of that animal and the eagle has medicine. Next to the eagle might be the owl and then next to the owl might be the hawk and next to the dolphin might be the seal and next to the seal might be the, I don't know, but there's a circle of animals that all have a message and actually there's a great wisdom. Uh, this is mapped, many people have mapped. So I do listen to these different wisdoms and I want to integrate, now that's the wonderful word, I want to integrate them. I want to integrate the eagle. I want to integrate the dolphin. I want to integrate my, my empathy and my capacity for healthy boundaries. Well, a bit of the in integration is for them to have a discussion. So what, what would your do uh, dolphin say to the eagle if it had a, had a conversation? Uh, I, I play my role. I give my medicine, I, I set the example that I set, I am being, I am being the essence of dolphinness, I am being the essence of eagleness, and there's no judgment. Eagles are not bad or wrong because they kill for prey, prey. That's, how, that's the way, that's the natural order of things. Dolphins aren't particularly good because they're gentle and kind. And what happens with humans is, is we have these value judgments. This type, this is good and this is bad. And in the natural kingdom, this is what I'm trying to say is, I don't see there's any value judgments. They're completely equal in value. The predator and the prey are equal in the natural order of things. And they would, eat, they would have a harmonious relationship. They are in a cooperative, co-creative reality. The predator couldn't exist without the prey and vice versa. The natural ecosystem would, would collapse without the predatorial hierarchy, and that's just, that, I mean, botanists and biologists have found this out. You, you remove the top predator from an ecosystem and the ecosystem will collapse. So there's a harmonious uh, relationship between the, in the animal kingdom that I think in some ways is teaching us as, because the Republican side of me can't have a predatorial side. The kind of the progressive side of me can be more of the prey side. And if we really step back and, 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 and empower both, then there's a synergy there. There's actually a creativity. It's a yin-yang. It's a masculine feminine. And therefore, they're drawn together and they create a synergy, which is the creative force of the universe, which is what I, I see reflected in the natural kingdom. This is the nature of life is Barbara Marks Hubbard is a friend, and she says, supra sex. It's not for procreation, it's co creation. It's the natural dynamic between the, the yin forces reflected by the dolphin and the deer and the gentle forces, and the yang forces reflected by the, the, the wolf and the eagle, for example. And you can even take these into human society and the Republican forces and the Democratic forces because we live in a democratic republic and we forgot that. That's part of my message in life is we live in a form that our founders said is a balance of these two forces. And that's what will be sustainable politically and that's what will be, it's what's sustainable in an ecosystem and it's what's sustainable in a human ecosystem is when you balance these and integrate these forces and they work not like this, but they work in, a, in that co-creative way.